So uh, you may be wondering uh, why we're starting with a picture of the New Jersey submerged roller coaster after Superstorm Sandy uh, if we're talking about peace and climate justice. Well, uh, let's remember that peace and justice begin at home, okay? And uh, we've heard of the expression, no justice, no peace. Uh, we're not just having roller coasters submerged. If you saw uh, Mark Lichty's film, and he's over here, or Josh Fox's recent film, you know that it isn't just the roller coasters that were submerged, but many people's homes were submerged in, Jersey, in Jer New Jersey, New York, on up to Boston, and so on. So that is uh, why we're starting with that. But then next, we're moving on to the serious story. Uh, there was a serious drought in Syria and actually the broader area around Syria in that whole period, five years, 2006 to 2011. Things got worse and worse. The eastern part of Syria was the breadbasket of Syria. Crops were down by 75%. And on top of that, there was a dictatorship which was not really handling the situation. So we have had protests beginning in 2010. Uh, ISIS members infiltrated from Iraq and started building the so-called Islamic State. Uh, and the Syrian civil war began and has continued, as you know, until now. Six million people have been displaced within Syria. And then four million, and these figures are now a little outdated, it's probably closer to five million by now, have, been, have become either refugees or asylum seekers in other countries. And this, the, the brunt of this has been borne by the surrounding countries of Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan. And of course, now we've got Europe affected. Uh, and Europe prided itself, the EU prided itself on open borders. Those borders are being closed. Let's uh, do the next slide. Uh, so this is a picture from the British Broadcasting Corporation. This is a picture of the 2,000-year-old Temple of Baal when it was intact. This is after bombing both from ISIS and from the government. And that's part of a wrecked Syrian city in the background. Next slide, please. These are Syrian children in Jordanian camps. Uh, there are over a million Syrian refugees in Jordan. And Jordan has actually done a remarkable job of trying to bring in, take in refugees, whether they were Muslims, Christian, Druze. They've been very uh, open. And, uh, but to give you an idea, Jordan is a country of only six million people. So a million refugees is as if the United States had taken in close to 80 million people in the last five years. Imagine what that would be like with 80 million refugees. Uh, I believe we've taken in 6,000. Next slide. This is the city of Aleppo. The city of Aleppo was the largest city in Syria until a few years ago. This slide is not very clear, but this was the central neighborhood of Aleppo, a city of two million people. This is the total ruins of that uh, downtown area. Uh, Close to a million people, about half the people in Aleppo have fled and either been displaced to other cities in Syria or left the country. Uh, next, please. Here is a, uh, again, uh, this is a UN camp. The UN has done a lot in Syria. UNHCR is UN High Commission for Refugees. and. Uh, Billions of dollars have been invested in trying to help the refugees, but the problem that there is in many countries is if you're a refugee, it, if you get in, that's one thing, but you're not allowed to work. Children's education is suspended. Now in Jordan, they have had schools, but not to the degree necessary. So it's a really a tragic situation. And then moving on to, uh, let's, Go to the next slide. 
This is the uh, Syrian diaspora. So this is Syria here, Jordan, Lebanon is another country that's taken in a disproportionate amount. The small countries taken in close to a million. Turkey has taken the most. Turkey has actually taken in two and a half million refugees, but now we see Turkey for its own reasons in part, but for in part because of the refugee crisis is going through a huge political uh, crisis. In fact, there was crisis. In fact, there was an attempted military coup just um, a week ago. Uh, and then the refugees went on to Greece and Europe beyond. Uh, next slide. Now, there is another side to uh, the whole question of climate change, as we know, and from uh, workshops this morning and plenary. Uh, we've all heard about the Paris Accords, and the Paris Accords are only uh, one, one step, uh, but they are a beginning. And it really started with the two, 2013 Majuro Accords. Uh, Majuro is the capital of the Marshall Islands. Marshall Islands, uh, forgive the expression, marshaled together 30 Pacific countries. Marshall Islands are going to be among the first to lose, they've already lost one island, <coughs> pardon me. There are 24 main islands, they've already lost one island to climate change. So they have a lot at stake. And I, my time is running out, so let's go to, uh, this is after the battle in Syria. This soldier came home and proposed to his bride-to-be. Let's go on to the last slide. Uh, so, of course, we're going to hear a lot more about uh, solutions here today. The uh, Coalition for Peace Action stands for 100% renewable energy. Uh, we will work with all of you in any way that we can. And we believe the only way to peace is to also have climate justice. And I think we have some literature uh, about all this at the table here as well as the sign-up sheet. So thanks very much.